connecting to nature, which is very true to my heart. Um, and, um, and I'll tell you a little personal story. Um, like I always felt like I, I loved nature, uh, but I, I didn't really appreciate it. I'm going back a, a number of years until I bought my dog. Um, well, actually, he wasn't my dog. He was my son's dog, but ended up, of course, being my dog. It's usually how it goes, isn't it? So um, I, you know, I would take this dog for a walk every every morning, rain or shine, because you know it needed to go for a walk, and I would take it for a walk. And then I started to really appreciate nature because it became like a discipline in my life, and I and um, and I started to 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 really feel at one with nature. And it's really weird. It's like my whole life changed at that time. I mean, I'm going back quite a while, but it, it really changed. It was over um, almost 11 years ago, but it just changed because I, I started to connect much more with what was important to me. And, um, and I guess my own spiritual practice started to open up. It was really interesting. So, um, on another note, when Palmaya, you know, uh, they this amazing place in Mexico that's on my on my bucket list, um, uh, joined our portfolio. I was like really getting excited about it, and um, and the more I got to know about the place, the more excited I became because of this deep respect they have for nature. Um, and then I chatted to Balda separately. And, um, and I was like, well, these guys have really got it right. So um, before we kick off, I am going to um, play you a little video of the place because I, it kind of signifies what, we're, what we've been talking about here so far. And um, so bear with me while I sort out my techie stuff here. Okay. Now this doesn't have any music, it's just sounds of nature. So I hope you can hear it. Did you hear those sounds of nature? Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks stunning, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. And um, uh, it's, yeah, it, it looks like, an, and I love that last shot where it went from the sea and the beach to the jungle, like all there in one place. It's just, um, it, it does look amazing. So let's kick it off and introduce Balder. Alda, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Are you on mute? You're not on mute, are you? Hello, hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Welcome and thank you for being here. I was just chatting with Bowser about what his name means because I've never heard the name Bowser before. And I'm like, it's, that's not really a, a South American name. Well, it's not a, a Mexican name, let's say, is it? But tell me what you told everyone. <laughs> well, um, my name is a Viking name. Um, it's brother, uh, the name of a god. 
It's brother of Thor, son of Odin, and I don't know why my dad and my mom chose that name for me because I'm nothing like a Viking. I'm small and brown, so, <laughs> but it's a nice name, I think. It's a great name. It's a name we won't forget. I love it. But uh, it means that you're obviously uh, um, having the uh, power of a god, so that's good, and a Viking god. <laughs> So that's great. So anyway, thank you so much for being with us from the from beautiful Mexico. And I guess you're in the gardens there at Palmaya, right? Um, yes. So um, what do you do at Palmaya? I know they call you a personal development guide, but what does that mean exactly? Um, what I do here, uh, if I'm honest, I enjoy <laughs> every second because uh, this place, this particular place in Earth, it's quite special. It's very, very truly special because um, in an unconscious way, without you to have to do anything, allows you to see further and to see very profound inside of yourself. Even if you don't have this, uh, um, purpose in your trip this this place is truly magic and what I do here is to be there because some people has a realization or has awakenings uh, without planning anything um, many of the people that came they discover a lot of things about themselves. So when that happened, um, my work here is to be there for them to share some reference for they to understand better what is happening and how to um, enjoy the most of that experience. But I have to say that anything of, of this, it's, um, like a goal of the people that came here. The people came here to enjoy and have a wonderful time in the ocean. And nobody ever uh, tell you what to do or what not to do. This place is for you to come and enjoy. Yeah, so sure. I mean, they call, it, I they call it a progressive wellness resort so that you can kind of um pick and choose what you want you don't you're not forced to do anything and you know there's kind of alcohol available if you want to have alcohol and there's it's not like a strict medical health resort it's um i yeah i i, I understand that and my i think you're very modest balder because my understanding is that you put together the whole program there on the kind of self-development side, right? But you're being humble and you're not telling us that. So I'm going to tell, tell everybody that. <laughs> so you, you, you've put, you've put all, of, all of that together. And, I, you know, we've had clients who've come to you and uh, we've had some um, um, feedback. And uh, one of them had said that she had um, like a real connection to her, to what's important in her life and she found that there so I guess I guess you do it in a in a subtle way rather than kind of you know forcing people to do things now um you are a shaman right I'm sorry I didn't you're a shaman you're a shaman <sighs> okay um it's important that yes, we uh, understand that concept um i my practice is not to identify myself as anything because i mean yes you can say it if you want okay i've said it you're a shaman so i think we need to understand what shamanism is because people find that quite a scary like some people think like what is that is it just um i guess how it's been depicted in the past like shamans are are people um, who are from tribes and do kind of what people in the West see as weird practices and all of that kind of thing. But when I was, I've been very interested in shamanism for a few years. And when I started to research it, I, I, I learned that 
Um, shamans come from all over the world. And what, what they are, they're, actually the name shaman apparently comes from a, a tribe in, or a, the peoples of Siberia. And, and what, that, what that was about was people who live close to the earth, right? And, um, uh, and have a deep connection and respect with the earth. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so every every different culture has different name. Yeah. So 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 t tell us tell us more about that. Like with your, you know, wh what is what is shamanism? Do you what what are you what are the principles of shamanism? Yeah. Uh, every every person. Everyone has this ability, um, but our way of thinking doesn't allow us to realize uh, this natural ability that we have to be connected with Earth. Uh, from the normal perspective, uh, you can see this as wonders because you can listen what the clouds, what the wind is telling, what the rain is telling, because everything has information. But this is not something that um, is so natural in the human being. Everyone has this ability. The only difference is when you allow yourself to quiet your mind and to realize and solve every concept that you have to really be able to listen to life as it is. So when a person can do this, uh, the people around them, they call them gurus, teachers, shaman. It's, it's the same principle everywhere. So when you allow yourself to use all the capabilities that they are in the human, uh, every human. So, so tell us more about about that kind of. Can you hear me? Yeah. Because yeah. everyone. Okay. Tell us more about the connection to um, the elements. Like you made, a, you know, you made a comment there that you can get a, feel what's going on through the clouds or through the rain or through the elements. I mean, that's part of shamanism, right? Where you connect with what they call the the spirits of the, um, the elements. I don't know enough about that, but um, tell us more about that because I'm trying to understand, I'm sure everyone else is, on, on what that means. Thanks to their relationship with every element, the humankind has been able to develop the current, the current civilization. Uh, thanks to the understanding we have of the fire, uh, thanks to the ability to guide the water, thanks to the ability to reshape the rocks. We have buildings, we have highways, we, have, uh, we can survive in winter in a cold weather. So we are in a constant and permanent uh, relationship with elements. We, our body is made from the same elements that the earth is. In essence, we are the earth. So, when you have concepts that you receive these concepts from your mom, from your dad, from the people around you, you use these concepts and then they become the only thing you know. When you open a little bit more this concept, you can realize that the reality, it's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit uh, full with things that you can perceive in a first moment. For example, uh, plants, the plants have, now the science can tell you that the plants have mind, that the plants can communicate between them, uh, that they take care of their own kind, that they can share, that 
And now science can tell you step by step why and how. So the human mind works in a time lapse, but our time lapse is different of the time lapse of the trees and the plants. They have a different dimension of processing and thinking. And I'm, I'm aware that I'm say thinking, they have thoughts, they speak with each other. So now science can tell you, well, they are connected and they can feel when, if some plants require more water, they can share water if they are far away from the source of water. And you can see an intelligence behind every plant, but you have to be willing to see further that the human concept tell you, well, that is a plant. In the same way that you realize that your dog is not just a thing, that your dog is a being, and every being has a mind, has a consciousness, has emotion. Then you realize, oh, it's not just a thing that it and moves. <laughs> then you can have a, this deep communication. So people think that the rocks are just things or crystals are just things. But that is because our human perception only allowed us to see a few aspects. But if you think about it, the rocks took years and years and hundreds and years to grow. And their time lapse, it's so different of the human time lapse. So when you are willing to perceive in a different way, the rocks has as super amazing wisdom. They have been here from the beginning. All the different is you. You already have everything that you need, but we like, uh, we have now this um, situation that we are in a rush all the time, every day, every day, every day, every day. So we don't have time to anything else. Um, that's more or less the basis because once you allow yourself to be you without an identity, without a, this is what we call the illusion, the illusion of who you are. Once you can see who you are um, in a real way, then a whole universe of possibilities opens for you. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's really interesting. You've made some really good points there. Um, I think as humans, we think we're so ter terribly important and clever and cleverer than than all other types of um, elements, let's call them, whether you say plants or, or even animals or any sentient beings or anything like that. And um, we, we don't really know. Um, I just want to share something. Um, with you, I hope you can see this on the screen. Um, it, this is a picture that I came across and um, it's very relevant. Actually, this is just from my Instagram, but um, can, you, can you see this? You can't see anything? No. Okay. Stella, do you need to turn your background off? Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> but, but so, yeah, I, I think I, um, I think I will do that. I think I will do that. So um, I'm going to go back to this. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's not, okay. It's not working, guys. It doesn't matter. It was. I, I can. I can post it later or or send it to you guys. But basically, it was the picture. It was a picture of um, our lungs and how our lungs look, um, and it it was almost identical to a picture of a tree with all the branches and everything else. And for me, when I saw that, it was such a realization that actually we are nature. We are, you know, like the patterns in nature are part of our human organism. And, you know, it's, we're not separate from nature. And I felt like actually quite sad because, um, 
we um, actually Joe makes the point there because we think we're separate. We've basically, um, as a as a human race, disrespected nature and the elements and everything else, and we've caused all these problems instead of living in tune with nature. But it's not all bad news because I feel now there's an awakening and people are really beginning to understand that more, you know, and it may be because we're close to a disaster that that's happening, but people are really beginning to kind of get that and see that and that how how connected we are with nature. And as you say, with with the plants, I mean, I remember um, when people who talk, I don't know if anyone here talks to their plants and um and gives love to their plants i mean i do it uh but um i remember years ago people would think we were crazy you know like people would think that there was something wrong with us because we would be talking to our plants but now as you say Velda, it's there's like science behind all of this and there's science behind now um the fact that they've worked out how cute trees communicate with each other um, so there is so much science, but it's almost like we can't believe or understand anything unless the scientists tell us, you know, <laughs> and then then we go, oh, look, that's got to happen because the scientists have told us that. But we know that inherently within our being, don't we? And that's what am I am I communicating this? Way? That's what your work is about. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so you're trying yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. To make so so tell us what we can do here in our everyday life for us like you know living in not in a place like you are <laughs> not amongst that beautiful background but in our day-to-day -day lives I mean we all have beauty in different ways on our doorsteps but what can we do to have that connection what how what can, what practices shamanic practices or whatever you want to call them can we apply to our daily lives so that we can do that uh well um you don't need to have this beautiful background or be in this place to for you to be connected with nature you also doesn't need actually anything uh, even the plastic even the furniture in your house, everything where you look around, you can look 360 uh, degrees around you and everything that you're going to see, it's nature. No matter in which shape, no matter the TV, the cell phone, the microwave, everything is nature. There is no way that you can escape of that. If you go to another planet, what you're going to find there, it's nature. Everything that this planet is, is has been uh, from the same source. So all the elements in the universe are present here in this planet. The first thing that I for realize is that there's a complete and total connection all the time every time so the person that use glasses the crystal it's it's there it's, it's it's so once you realize this um a beautiful practice to begin with is to feel your feet without a bare foot Touching, no matter if you cannot go outside because it's freezing in your own house, feel the floor with your feet. Begin to develop a relation, a conscious relationship with your feet. Uh, hire someone that gave you a, a massage in your feet. Uh, put your feet in hot water and feel how that looks like with salt. And you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do anything. Everything that you require, it's already there. You have it. But sometimes the only thing uh, you need to do is 
feel. Everybody thinks that we feel, but it's a very tricky concept because we think that we feel, and it's very different. So if you want to try, dare to feel, not think about feeling or sensation. Actually, be present. That is the uh, um, beginning exercise. If you want to try, you're going to discover a lot of things. If you are uh, right-handed, try to do things with your left one and uh, check what your body is telling you. Uh, all kind of possibilities. So I don't know. Begin with feeling. So being feel, actually feel what's going on in your body is what you're saying, right? Like really feel like, like the whole thing about your feet connecting with your feet and feeling what's going on with your feet. So um, some people I know do this even in this country in the cold. <laughs> they go and they stand outside on the grass in the morning, like with barefoot to feel that connection with the earth. And um, it, it's amazing the energy that you feel from that. It's quite an interesting um, practice. I don't, I don't do that every day, but I know people who do um, and, they, and, they, and they love that. But that, like you'll say, walk around barefooted to really feel, is that what you mean? Like feel your body, like that connection with, with, with nature? It could, it could look like um, a very simple thing. Oh no, he's frozen. Oh, I've lost him. I can't believe it. I've lost him. Just when we get to that part. But um, anyway, we'll wait for him to come back in. He will come back in. But um, does anyone else? Hello. Oh, you're back. You're back. Oh, there you are. Um, okay. um, I say that, but uh, this very simple thing will help you to open um, your mind. Uh, when you stop feeling, it's because your mind is taking the place of your body. So when your mind is the one that it rules your life, then there is no more emotion in this life. Then you know everything, then nothing is important because you are, you know. you. But when you begin to practice to feel again, something in, inside of your mind uh, begins to open. Uh, more and more every time and then suddenly you realize that you are not inside of your thoughts anymore like you are actually uh, enjoying life so begin with your feet but could be any part of your body uh, so <laughs> and so this is this you is the way. you you you're a big um, advocate of yoga right you 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 really believe in yoga and nature being hand in hand. Yoga, everybody um, understand yoga like the positions. That is one of the eight uh, states of yoga. It's called uh, asanas or positions. But yoga means to be one. What means to be one? Again, because you're going to say, well, I'm one. There's no possible that I'm different. Well, you are your emotions. You are your thoughts. You are your body. If your emotions and your mind doesn't match, you are not in yoga. You are not one. If what you know and what you say doesn't match, then you are not one. If your mind and your body are apart, they don't co are connected, then you are not one. So feel again, it's with the purpose to can be able to listen to your heart. So everybody thinks heart is emotions and it's not like that. Heart, it's a very, very, very powerful center connect with the wisdom of the universe, not emotions, not human emotion. I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about the source of all the information in the universe. Your brain is the one 
could translate that information. But the information actually came from this center. So if you are not connected with this center anymore, then the only thing that remains is the mind. And the mind can be limited if you do not, if it's not connected with the universal source. So live inside of our own mind could be very stressful and limited. So once, um, so once you connect with nature, once you have that, it's an it's an easier practice, is what you're saying, right? Is that correct? Because you without, see, because nature um, has its cycles rather than this, um, and maybe they do, I don't know, maybe it does, like a mind saying, do this, do this, no, that's wrong, this is right, this is, you know, judgment, judgment, fear, whatever. What we, have, what we call our brain or our mind, it's just a helper that uh, allowed us to understand. But when we are only have a few ways to react, then becomes very limited because life has so many possibilities, infinite possibilities. And what happens is that inside of our mind, there becomes very, very small because we only have a few ways to react. And with the time, these ways are less and less and less and less. Only, but if you uh, become able to feel and to listen, then these ways of react are more and more and more and more, and more until Every second of your existence is pure joy. I'm not saying that you are not going to experience pain or anything. It's not like that. It's that you are in tune and aware and everything that happens, good or bad, you can make it joyful. This is not to escape of life. This is about to be one with life. That is yoga. And that stage is, oof. Amazing. Can you do the practice with us now? Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a very, very simple practice. Okay. Very simple practice. What we're going to experience is to have a contact, a conscious contact with what it is without, without labels, without names, without concept. So, as I said before, everything that we need, it's in our own body. Today, we're going to pay a lot of attention in our tongue. Every time that your tongue is active and is touching any part inside of your mouth, your brain immediately will create a thought. So if you want to have zero thoughts, you have to be very aware of what your tongue is doing. At the moment that your tongue gets active, in that moment, your brain goes to begin with thought. So I invite you to be very, very, very comfortable, very comfortable, lose anything that you have in your hands, and feel how your tongue lays down in the base of your mouth without touching any of the teeth or palate, completely soft in the base of your mouth. Make sure that all your tongue is thin and soft. Lips together. And now relax and lift your palate, your jaw, very natural. And we want to create a little bit more space inside of our mouth. So lips together, to natural, soften, and lift your palate. Now feel how you open your throat. 
feel how you open your throat and how the air goes in and out very easy. Feel how you put apart your tongue from your throat. Now, feel this sensation. Close your eyes and soften your face. Soften your forehead, your eyebrows, your eyelids. Soften your cheekbone, your nose, your lips, your chin. And feel how you soften again and again every muscle inside of your mouth. Active your ears and listen every sound around you. No matter what sound, pay attention to every sound and Perceive the distance, the direction, the intensity of every sound. And allow every sound to be, no matter what. Every and all of the sound are going to lead you into a very relaxing state. Sound are life. With your skin, perceive your clothes. Perceive your seat. Without any movement, identify with your mind the place inside of your body where you can feel your pulse. Search with your mind the place inside of your body, perhaps your arm, perhaps your leg, perhaps your neck, your chest, maybe your stomach. And once you identify that pulse, Make this sensation bigger and bigger until you can feel the movement of your blood in every corner inside of your body. Feel the shape of your heart. The side of your heart. And every heartbeat. Soften. Again and again every muscle inside of your mouth. Again and again.
save and save and so listen every sound around you. Imagine or visualize three steps up there in front of you. Up the first step. In A and up the second step in K and begin with the movement of your hand. Open the up the third step and gently open your eye as way. Please put your hands together in front of the, your heart. Take a deep breath. Concentrate. So, thank you, Bowser. I'm going to ask the the um, our community a question here because. Do people find it really hard just to sit in silence like that? It's tough, isn't it? I found I struggled a little bit there. Um, and, um, I, you know, you were guiding us and then you went silent. And my mind, I was, I, my mind was quiet until you went silent. And then when you went silent, my mind was, ooh. <laughs> Did everyone else find that? Yeah, or, or some some people, um, but it's it just that's an awakening for me for sure. That you know, silence and nothing is um, is 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 difficult. Rachel says she loved it. Sitting in silence is so powerful and um, beautiful yoga. Um, so thank you. Yeah. And it is, it is that I think it's a practice, right? We have to practice just totally sitting in silence. And Jill says she felt held. And I know you were holding the space there. I know you, I, I could see you like had a little peek. <laughs> but um, so um, it is, it's a beautiful, do you think, so when 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 we have the drama going on and the the difficult situations, you made you you said something to me when we spoke before when you said when you have the theatre and the drama of your life, which is really what it is. If you if you think it's like playing like a movie, it's our mind conjuring up situations like a movie. So it is really a theatre, right? It is really a theatre and a drama. It, this is the practice that we should come to. It's just what it's what just happened. Um, while somebody it's directing your attention, then you can on. Um, You were not need any type of music or thing because that is going to guide your attention. Then you will feel nice. But at the moment you don't have that. Everything goes back to this state of hurry. What next? What next? What next? What next? So all kind of drama happened there. Will you be able to? Be aware of what your tongue was doing. At the moment, you are able to guide your muscles, your tongue, to soften them. Everything becomes silent. No matter if you have a, not a noise here in your, next to your ear, it's going to be silent. Because that is a state of mind. So we are used to receive entertainment, 
everything it's with the goal to entertain our mind with something. And that is what I mean about feel. We don't feel because at the moment we feel, we scare. <gasps> What's happening? No, no, no. I need my mind into something. For you in your specific case, Stella, and because you are hosting and you are taking care of all of your guests, for sure, this is like, what happened next? What next? What next? So when your mind is in what next, it's because you are not feeling. Yeah. When your mind tells you, I want this forever, it's because you are present. You are uh, mindfulness because your mind is now in contact with everything. And it's a great sensation. Some of you were able to feel it. And if you don't, please don't feel bad about it because looks, it's very simple, but it's not easy. Looks very simple. So... Give yourself the opportunity. It's okay. Every day, one minute, make sure that your tongue is soft, that every muscle inside of your mouth is soft, that your face is soft. Practice. The tongue is a, an interesting um, um, way of getting there. Like that, just having it, like you said, thin and not touching anything. <laughs> You know that and not touching your teeth on it and that actually did it was like a fast track to mm -hmm. going you know getting some peace it's quite an in that's that was an interesting um thing um and so every day we should just a few minutes of silence and allowing our our minds and allow also every sound allow every st stop fighting with the sounds in life. We need calm to, we need silence to be calm because our body is related with animals of prey. So for us to be able to calm down, we need silence because if somebody wants to kill us, we will have chance to hear it and escape. I mean, the hunters, the animals that hunt, they have a very short intestine, a very powerful uh, digestive uh, juice. But we are not. We have a long intestine. We have. Uh, uh, we are more related with uh, animals of prey. Because of this, it's very important that you realize that you are using your ears every day, all day, in an unconscious way. That's why you feel stress with sound. But when you are aware of the sound, instead feel stress, you will feel that you are calmer and calmer and calmer. So these two things, ears and tongue. Interesting. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us a little bit of peace then on a, on a Saturday evening here. I mean, I know um, I just want to say that respect for the um, plant life and animal and the elements and everything else it carries through at Palmaya, right? Because it's everything in the rooms, everything. There's no animal products anywhere or anything tested on animals or anything like that um, there. And also, um, also, uh, oh, look, we have a great comment there about TMD, to, um, the jaw, um, people who have jaw issues. So that tongue uh, practice could really help. TMJ, sorry, not TMJ. Yeah, TMJ um, can help the um, people with TMJ uh, relax there. Uh, but um, yeah, sorry, coming back to Palmaya, that there's like complete respect to, to plant life. So, you know, no feathers in the quilts, any, everything, nothing. <coughs> And um, I do know that you have a, um, you do you do serve uh, some animal protein, but the majority of the food there is uh, vegan, right? It's all plant plant based. So yes. uh, that's um, so I, you know, I can understand why you're there. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I can see why you're why you're there and why you're doing your work. Um, and I guess that puts us more in tune with with that. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Does anyone have any questions before we we close the the event? Can I just ask about the tongue again, um, Stella Boulder? I just wanted to know. When you started, I think you said the tongue at the bottom, on the bottom palate, did you? And is that where um, it is, or I'm, I just need clarity on where the tongue is positioned yes. in the whole session. The tongue has to be completely soft, like lay down your tongue. So wherever it lands, uh, it has to be soft and thin. So if your tongue is still active a little bit to put it in some place, it's not the right way. It has to be completely, completely soft. Like when you are very tired in the night and you just lay down in your bed like that. Thank you. Without touching any part of the mouth. Uh -huh. Thank you. Practice in bed, Lorraine, before you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and there we go there okay wonderful well thank you so much um everyone for coming and um experiencing that lovely wisdom from Valdo is beautiful and uh, the reminder the reminder of who we really are and why what you know that we can get joy in in, in every moment as you say so um Thank you for that. And uh, please in, continue to enjoy your lovely Mexican sunshine and send us some over here. Thank you very much. <laughs> we are uh, looking forward for you to visit us. Yeah, thank Enjoy. you. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, have a great week, everybody. Um, I'll be in touch uh, for next week. We've got Olga Hamilton uh, back next week. And I'll send an email about that and um, have a wonderful week ahead. And um, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Oh, I just want to say, I don't, gracias. Um, I just want to say, actually, I'm not sure if, if, if Marg is still here before we, um, we go. She put a lovely quote, an Einstein quote in the chat. Uh, which um, whoever's still here, I'll read it out. She says, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that, that honours the servant and has forgotten the gift, which is, I think, such a beautiful um, quote. Thank you so much, Mark, for, for sharing that, if you're still around. <laughs> Take care. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.